testing, testing. Welcome to Wickerson Studios. Michael Wickerson here. It is January 1st, 2023. I'm going to toggle this on and start to bake an interesting geometry. And I wanted to show you the power of working with Rhino Grasshopper, the C Sharp Node Visual Studio Code, and the plugin um, C Sharp Parasite with GitHub. So, in a nutshell, I'm going to try and do the five top things you want to do to figure this out. I've got a Grasshopper script running here. I have a Rhino environment as these interesting geometries are basic baking. I'm going to turn off the bake right now. I'm going to turn off my simulation in Grasshopper because I haven't scripted it at all. I do a lot of scripting um, outside of the component as well. I'm just going to stop the trigger. I'm going to stop the uh, record. And I think we're ready to go. And then I'm going to pull back to the actual C sharp um, node that's paired with the C sharp script parasite component, which is right here. And uh, what you're going to want to do is first and foremost in learning anything like this, if you're new to it, is you're going to want to know the user interface. So number one, the user interface. And that means you're going to have to pretty much learn everything you can about the Rhino viewport, which is right here. Um, I, I keep it fairly simple. I don't make my environment too big. I usually double up over here uh, so I can do some manipulation after after everything's kind of done. You can see there's pretty complex geometry I just uh, made and I was thinking of it as a complex maze kind of spatial construction to experience possibly in Unity. but getting your head around this. Uh, probably the most basic thing in the user interface for Rhino is to go through and learn how to make everything in the curve file and everything in the surface file. And if you can do that and wrap your head around the necessity to work with those two things, you'll realize the importance of Rhino for curves and for surfaces. The next thing you're going to want to do is learn how to type in the word grasshopper here. Uh, if you're new to it, which I know a lot of the people following me definitely know this, that will open a grasshopper canvas that pairs against what you're doing. And in that grasshopper canvas, you can build something, you know, 12, 24 nodes that do something. Um, right here, I have a pretty simple side simulation, which just actually is just kind of an engine that runs a very simple script. The script itself is not very complex. It's based on a sphere. So if we go back over to here, we can see that this thing actually is generated from the concept of a quad sphere, which is looking at its faces. I'm choosing all of its faces at once. And then I'm basically bringing it in as a surface, doing a surface evaluation, or a divide surface, which is actually a simple node that's actually written up in the surface file. I think I use it. Yeah, I have a script here that will handle, and I got this from Parametric Camp, which I'm going to talk about. But you're going to want to kind of know the kind of node scripting sense of looking at points, uh, visualizing vectors, dealing with curves. And then probably all you'll have to do post um, C Sharp script is bring it into a curve and probably find a way to either mesh pipe it or pipe it or subdivision it to give yourself some geometry. And then I just have a simple bake geometry component on after. Down here is in case I want to do subdivisions instead of meshes, but meshes um, with four sides uh, with a small radius. Or actually, actually the radius is parametric too. It kind of oscillates through the uh, trigonometry as well, which is what makes this so random and beautiful. Uh, so once you figure out uh, how to run and how to open and close things like this C Sharp script uh, and run it. Um, the C Sharp script, when you double click on it, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, you can change it back to a C Sharp script, but you can actually name it um, with the paint tool. And I'm calling that create point geometry number five. I'm going to make about 12 algorithms for people. And then you'll learn that you can actually script in C Sharp over here in the C Sharp node uh, editor. But the problem is, or not the problem, but the advantage is, is going here and actually there's a special script that's created through Parametric Camp, but basically baking to a folk alert on my desktop, every time I hit true here and I link within group this C Sharp Parasite script, and I'm not sure if the Parasite script has a name, so I'm just going to jump over here and pop on my bifocals for a second because I am curious what would happen with bifocals on that. Yeah, that's the script Parasite script. So that's nice to throw that in. So if these two are grouped within the same area, whenever I hit true, they are baked not only as a GH file, but they pair with a CS uh, 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 
C sharp source file and you can open those CS source files in Visual Studio Code and when you do you actually have a paired script that will update directly to your C sharp script so when I update this if you get into here it's going to bring you to the next thing remember we're only talking about user interfaces right now Rhino environment Grasshopper Canvas, the C Sharp Node, Visual Studio Code, you have to acclimate yourself towards learning how to script in it, and the plugin, which was back on the other thing, I'll show you where you actually have to, there's not much interface to learn there. But in doing so, the next thing you'll have to do is probably learn as much as you can about C Sharp programming. And I would go right back to the source and I would start with a simple C Sharp course so you understand kind of how that language works. If you're familiar with Python, it should be hard to jump back over, or in other coding languages, it should be something worth doing. The next place that you may find very helpful, um, and I did mention earlier, the script Parasite plugin. It comes from the Food for Rhino. You'll have to learn how to download and bring those to your libraries as well, which I can help people with if they're interested. But the next thing is really this website, Parametric Camp. You will learn everything in the advanced development for Grasshopper. And where you take that creatively uh, is really up to you, uh, creatively and exploring and having a lot of free play. But you will learn everything that you need to do running through this list when it comes to getting things up and running like this. I think by the first couple of dozen videos, you'll be in great shape. Um, the Rhino API is essential to go in and think about how would you jump into say something like Rhino Common, go into a namespace geometry, uh, jump into breps, and then be able to look at the constructors and say, okay, how do I make a brep? You'll see these are static and they're locked. You're going to have trouble jumping right in with them, but you can go down to the methods and you can edge curve, append, compact, create blend shape. Um, if you end up getting into this and starting to read the documentation, you can start to understand how this information here allows you uh, with a Rhino Common Library in Visual Studio how to bring in proper code. But with that said, you can also play with what I've been doing, jumping over to not just the Rhino Common, Chat GPT. And Chat GPT, you can basically say whatever you want. Now it's not as accurate as GitHub Copilot, but if you preface everything like before with create me a C sharp simple script for grasshopper oh, simple um, uh, using the C sharp node uh, let's just see what it does uh, certainly here's a simple script and boom it starts writing there's no guarantee this will work and I played with this a little bit but I ran into so many problems with you know made up functions as it's just guessing at what will happen when things get complex it gets a little too hard so what I suggest is going over to something like github copilot tons of tutorials on it that brings you back into Visual Studio and if you can go to your extensions and, and activate for ten dollars a month github copilot you'll realize that this script just from comments alone if we jumped in here I can actually I think I have one more thing to show um, on uh, on the other one after GitHub Copilot. A couple more tabs I want to show. Basically, you can go in and say in your algorithms, create a list of points. Boom. Create a vector from the origin to each of these points. Boom. Create a vector by random number. Boom. Create a number walker algorithm that creates a thousand points. Generated. Create a random number orient the points to point to list and at this point it's kind of writing itself and I can even the comments are finishing themselves create a loop that will orient the points and create the points output all you have to do is start putting in variables it'll type in your own outputs and when that is run on Visual Studio you will update over here in the C node you can run it and when you run it your inputs you can start to alter this code and allow yourself the surface input which I said before was just a single face of a quad sphere actually all the faces of a quad sphere you can start to change the UV count on it and C was where I wanted to put in a radius uh, as the uh, random uh, for the random 
uh, strip that went in here. And I think if you look down, you'll see that there's an R somewhere, which I simply put it as an input. The only thing with the C-sharp nodes is you have to learn how to type, uh, generate them, which popped up on my other screen. And you have to have ac list access, single item access, or tree access. And you also have to item type them as uh, double, if that's what the number is, or as an integer, or as a surface, if that's what it is. So if I click on here and look at type in, you see surface is selected. So you have to lose the interface of everything, but when you're done, you're basically left with a huge series of information. Let's say we went on to here. I'm going to downsize my C script. We don't really need to see that because it's working in Visual Studio Code. I've got points. I've got points generated out. I've got curves that are generated out of them, and I've got meshes that are popping. And then if I throw it back into the bake node, which is such a fast algorithm for baking, I go back over, I set my simulator going, and I want to show you that I use a nice gene pool to actually, um, I didn't use the other data, so I'm only using the top two. So as I change this, these are the only two really affecting the geometry. But gene pool is another sense of figuring things out. And when you get close to something you like, you can just alter it 10%. Or if you really like it, you can alter it 1%. And if you alter it, you want a total change, you can change it by 100%. And then you just get your little uh, Wickerson Studio kind of code up to uh, generate, reset it, and it's doing its little box dance, and whenever you want to bake those forms, you can go in and do it. So that's basically it. Um, what you should do to start is not something as complex as this. You should start with basic geometry, and do that not only over here, bringing in solid geometries and things like, let me leave this, uh, exit out of that. Um, if I went down here, I would not suggest playing on these tabs here. Uh, that will come in time. Stick with the curve menus, stick with the surface menus, and generate things through those. And then maybe move into your solids. You could avoid subdivision and meshes to start, but just get your um, forms in there, your NURBS surfaces and NURBS curves in there. Nice little place to start in Rhino. And then you want to end up, after learning that, going in here and realizing that your surfaces and curves are right here, and you can generate those from primitives over in Grasshopper, like the quad sphere, which is then generated within the piece. And you can see it there. Uh, it's tucked away in there. You can see all of its, its points, its faces. And it actually has that wonderful uh, radii we can change, which would alter our whole structure and change everything we're fabricating. So you've got good parametric control. But the point is in Grasshopper to gain that parametric control by knowing about that user interface. So create simple geometry is a step after you learn the user interface you learn about those environments, but you really you learn about Parametric Camp, Rhino documentation, Chat GBT, and GitHub Copilot. But the third step is to learn basic geometries in the Rhino environment and basic geometries coming out of Grasshopper. Then I would say, start thinking of the C# -sharp components. You can learn tons online, which is what I did. I actually generated from Raya Ice's white paper all the C# -sharp nodes. It's around here under R somewhere. Maybe this one all these C-sharp nodes for producing curves, points, meshes that I can borrow and have in here, hard-coded kind of in my sense of user objects. That was the way I was doing a couple of years ago. Um, then what you need to do is go back to a piece of paper and have a sketch, have a plan, and know what you're going to do, and or at least begin to know what you're going to do. So I'm going to suggest going in and finding somebody like PJ Chen. And PJ Chen's, you can go to their free tutorials, and immediately start jumping in uh, on their YouTube channel to anything they're making to get inspiration. Any of these forms to begin with are enough that if you start with the, the, the methods of where she goes through and the nodes that she pulls up and how she works straight in the Rhino environment, you can make that parametric in Grasshopper. You can start thinking about it computationally in the C-sharp node, and you can take it right to GitHub Copilot in, in um in Visual Studio Code with GitHub Copilot. And then don't forget your creativity to explore and have free play. Uh, that really is the trick. So as you go back into here and you're, and you're playing around and putting things in when necessary in the script and pulling them out when they're not necessary on both ends of those simple nodes, because if we take a look at the script, it's not that hard. It's outputting points, vectors, a random out, another vector, and some more points. And from that, this is written from the Visual Studio Code, pretty much itself in using GitHub Copilot. It's only how many lines, 100 lines of script, 140 lines of script, lots of spacing. It's 
an awful lot of for loops. You don't have to get caught up in all the particulars because if you say use Rhino Common, it will stay to that and make a beautiful scripted uh, interface that you don't have to guess at scripting over in C Sharp node. Uh, and then just like a stone carver from a model, don't try and upsize your plan into a full-fledged project. Let it be small components. Get one step, then another step farther. So those are the five things I would suggest. User interface, do your research from Parametric Camp to GitHub Copilot, start with simple geometries, take it in the Grasshopper and the C component, then go right back to the drawing board literally. Sketch and follow that plan. Find inspiration from other modelers, architects, designers, jewelers. And then number five, creativity, exploration, free play. Like a stone carver taking a model and making a new work from it, not copying it exactly. So, and that's, that's basically the summarize of what it is. If I could say it another way more computationally, when you get to the level of sketching, bringing in geometric objects, parametrically creating models, uh, so you're going from Rhino to Grasshopper to computational control, start to add what's, what are like attributes, start to group things, start to think how clustering can be done in the C node, pack small, pack into small C nodes and use them multiple times, and think of them as digital assets, and then add with the vectors, really understand vector transformations and vector generation. And if you think of the tool like Houdini, where they talk about wrangling with things in their own VEX programming, use the C-sharp component, or even the GH Python component, if you like, um, if that's really a language you want to use. The problem with GH Python is you can't take that over in the Visual Studio as quickly. You can take your code over. You can write it in Python. You can use GitHub Copilot with that. But to have it transfer back into C Sharp, I'm afraid the tool is only the C Sharp uh, node, which turns up in your math tab when you download it as a plugin. You'll see C Sharp's become something I've really been passionate about. I played around with a lot of the programs, GH C Python, the GH Python script, and GH Python Remote, but I found them limited in the Python 2.0 language for the most part. So I thought this was the answer. The script parasite shows up. Bring it in group it with one of your C nodes, and generate, every time you run it, a new Grasshopper script that pairs with a C-sharp source file, which can be opened directly over into here. And if you start seeing your program as text as to what you want to do, and then you've generated the C-sharp that drives the Grasshopper, you'll see that this will drive this, the C-sharp will drive Grasshopper, and Grasshopper will slowly move its way back into something that you can have from your past experience modeling in Grasshopper, um, creating a pretty cool geometry. And if you want to take a look at it in the wonderful turntable tool, that's all I'm going to do is throw it on, just let it spin a bit. I'm going to take it vice versa to turn back time for this New Year's Day. And that's Michael Wickerson, Wickerson Studios in a nutshell thinking about how to use GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio Code to run your C-sharp scripts in Grasshopper for Rhino 3D. And with that said, I'll stop streaming and stop recording.